Welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. The NBA Finals continue to be epic. The Boston Celtics had this game in the bag through two plus quarters going into the second half. And in moments in that third quarter, you thought the Celtics were going to take a commanding 3 1 lead in the NBA Finals. But Steph Curry went off for a 43 point performance. That's one of the best games that we've ever seen. And now we get what we all secretly want. A close NBA Finals, 2-2, going back to the Chase Center in San Francisco for Game 5 on Monday night. A great series between two heavyweight teams, and this is what you want at the championship round. So we're going to answer all of your questions following Game 4. Another marvelous performance from both sides, and man, I got to catch my breath with how exciting the NBA Finals have been. But... We start off our post-game show with this coming in from Malurior. Game 6, Clay, the home court advantage, and all the momentum. I feel like I've seen this before. And for those of you counting out Clay Thompson, you can't count out one of the all-time greats. And yes, you can say that Clay Thompson isn't the same player that he once was in his prime, when he's one of the best two-way players that we've ever seen. Think about it. Defensively, Clay Thompson was guarding LeBron James to an elite level, Kawhi Leonard, he was locking down Kevin Durant when Kevin Durant wasn't playing for the Warriors and one of the most lethal shooters of all time. Now, athletically, not the same guy coming off the Achilles and the ACL injuries, but at moments in this game, made some really big defensive stops and, of course, like he always does, made some big shots. And he's had a couple of big performances throughout this playoff run. Don't get it twisted. Against Memphis, in that closeout game against the Dallas Mavericks, Game three against the Celtics, he had 25 points, and tonight, 18 big ones. Up in smoke, where will Bradley Beal end up? Look, I want to see Bradley Beal go to a really good team. I think he's going to go back to the Washington Wizards. He has an opportunity to secure historic money for himself and his family moving forward. I think he's going to end up taking a contract extension with the Washington Wizards. He's going to go back, and then maybe... Over the next year and change, he's going to see how everything plays out. And you know how player empowerment goes. If he wants to get moved elsewhere, he'll get moved elsewhere. Lou 37, son. If James Wiseman was healthy, would this be an easier series for Golden State? If James Wiseman was healthy, the Warriors would be much better off in that front court. Now, without him playing at all in year two... I'm not sure that if you were to able to come back from that knee injury that he would give the Warriors that many minutes. But let's just say that he was able to get some run in the regular season and get ready and fine-tuned for the playoffs. What are the Warriors missing right now? They're missing depth and overall play in the front court. Robert Williams has dominated Golden State throughout the NBA Finals with his energy extending plays leading to second chance points. His rim protection and rim altering has been fantastic. His passing ability, end of the first half, I believe, the pass to Grant Williams, that was an excellent pass from a big man. He's outplayed Draymond Green. He's out-rebounded Draymond Green. He's played better than Kevon Looney. And if you had an athletic force in James Wiseman to at least spell Robert Williams, it would help the Warriors out a lot. Tantalizing potential, has to stay healthy, and could be a trade chip for the Warriors this offseason. Let me ask you this, and I want to hear from everybody in the comment section right now. MVP of Game 4 is who? Has to be Steph Curry, right? I think it's one of the best playoff performances that we've ever seen, considering the Celtics had this game in their grasp, on their fingertips. They're about to take a 3-1 lead, and Curry throughout it put the team on his back, albeit with him being injured as well. Jerome, is Draymond Green dirtier than Bill Lambeer? I think that Bill Lambeer was a dirtier player because of the rules back then in the NBA. Like, Bill Lambeer was legit smoking cats. He was throwing punches. He was bodying fools. You did that in today's NBA, and Draymond Green talked about this. Draymond would get fined like $1 million. Back then, it was accepted at the NBA level for some of this physicality. A lot of us watched... The Last Dance, he was basically tackling Michael Jordan when he was trying to take it to the rim. If Draymond were to do that today, he'd get ejected, he'd get fined, he'd get suspended. It's a different game. So Bill Lambeer, much dirtier player than Draymond Green. Although Draymond and nowadays NBA, the ultimate agitator, but he doesn't have much to stand on right now because I think Draymond Green has been terrible throughout the NBA Finals. He has admitted that. So me saying that shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. 
Mukesh, what's your opinion? Who will win the finals? Look, going in, I said Warriors in seven. I thought this had the opportunity and the chance to be one of the better and most competitive NBA finals that we've seen over the last couple of years. I'm going to stick with Warriors in seven, especially after a huge game four win. But I also said this going in. Wouldn't surprise me one bit if the Celtics were victorious in this series. They've clearly bothered Golden State with their length, their athleticism, their defense, the aforementioned dominance of Robert Williams. But I also said that the biggest thing going into this finals was the Warriors championship experience, their pedigree, the fact that they've been there, they've done that, they've won three titles, they have stones, they don't get phased by going on the road. And that's how they won this game. Uh, they won this game because of championship pedigree. And I think that that ends up being a very big component of this series. Barber Goo, Ralph, bias commentary. I'm talking about both teams here. I'm just spitting facts here. So if you have a problem with it, then don't watch. I mean, I'm giving you my opinions on what happened in this game. That's what has happened. I said that either team could win. It's about a 50-50 split. And I think both of these teams are great. The Celtics as an upstart team in the league, man, they're a problem. But I went with Warriors because of, at the end of the day, I like their championship experience. And as we saw today, Celtics failed to close this game out like they failed to close some games out against the Bucks and against the Heat. So I let my opinion be known of who I think is going to win this series. Look, I think the Celtics could easily win. They have the mental fortitude. They have the ability, the skill set, the talent, the versatility, the depth to win. But I'm just sticking with what I went with going into this series. At the start of the playoffs, I also said the Celtics would win the East. And they won the East. C for the Celtics. W for the Warriors. Get those votes in. Also, make sure you subscribe to all of our NBA channels here. Our main chat sports YouTube channel. Golden State Warriors today. Boston Celtics today. We continue to churn out fabulous content. So make sure you hit that sub button and show us some love. Darren Everest. Curry. A more valuable player than LeBron right now? That's a really good question. Um, Coop, I want to bring you in here. You have some really good just overall NBA analysis. More valuable player right now, Curry or LeBron? I think it's still LeBron just because without, without LeBron, the Lakers would just be absolutely nowhere Terrible. right now. And, yeah, they battled injuries throughout this whole season, but LeBron was still fantastic. Yeah. And if, if the Lakers were anywhere near the playoff race, he would have been right in the MVP race as well. Yeah. Uh, what LeBron's doing at 38 is just unheard of, and he can, he'll, he can play well into his 40s. And I still think that any team with LeBron becomes an instant contender, whereas I'm not sure every single team with Curry becomes an instant contender. Yeah, you think about Steph Curry, right? He's a slighter, smaller guard, and... With my team building philosophy, I like wings and guards as the main keys to you winning an NBA championship when you're building your roster. But Steph and LeBron are obviously different players. I think LeBron is the more well-rounded player who impacts the game in a variety of ways. I think Steph benefits to a certain degree of just being in the perfect situation with the perfect complementary cast, with the coach that puts him in position to succeed. Also, though... Like, for Steph Curry, you have to give him props as well. His stamina is unbelievable at his age. He never gets tired. He's clutch, one of the clutchest superstars of all time. He's refined his skills over time and changed and adapted his game. And he's an all-time great. If he wins NBA Finals MVP, I think he vaults into the top 10 players of all time. I think there's no question. Four rings, matches LeBron. Then it becomes a conversation, who is the more impactful superstar of this generation. Is it LeBron or is it Steph? It's really, really close. Steph has literally changed the way that the game has been played at all three levels, high school, college, and the pro. LeBron can't say that. Also, Steph's more relatable because he's a smaller guy who you can actually relate to, unlike LeBron James, who is bionic. He's 6'9 and 240 and cut and is full, right? So, yeah, it's a really tough question, Darren. A great question. Thank you for that. Lord Dink, last question in our post-game show. What y'all think about Beal going to L.A.? If you're the Lakers and if you're the Wizards, what do you want back for Bradley Beal? You're not getting Russell Westbrook back to D.C. It would have to be a three-team trade, and the Wizards would have to get a lot. 
The Lakers lack money. They lack trade assets. They have no draft capital. They try to dangle that 2027 first round pick. Cool. I mean, it's 2022, right? So what are the Lakers going to give up for Bradley Beal? Russell Westbrook? Kendrick Nunn? You'd have to trade away Anthony Davis. That's what would have to take place for a trade of Bradley Beal to happen to go to L.A. Okay, one more time. Get your predictions in before we hop on out of here for our post-game show. Give us a C for the Celtics, W for the Warriors, a phenomenal series transpiring, and we'll be breaking it down right here on Shot Sports.